but I see not a lot of people who are bridging the gap, immersing themselves fully into the physical world as well as into the spiritual world. Then we don't need to escape because we are already there. We are where we need to be. The paradise, it's here, it's present, it's right before our eyes. Good morning, friends. Since I started my polyphasic sleeping routine around seven weeks ago, this day started pretty early for me. Got up at midnight after three hours of core sleep. If you haven't watched my video about polyphasic sleeping, how I have since almost two months now sleep only four hours each day and feel amazing. <laughs> um, if you didn't watch that, watch it. So I got up, at, got, got up at midnight and then started into this next beautiful opportunity to experience and to create magic um, that is called Thursday um, with uh, another beautiful call with our New Earth Spaces founder group that I, uh, that I started um, a while ago. I invited a handful of two handful of people um, that are going for similar projects as what we are up to with custodia building these yeah new paradigm living spaces in other corners of the world and today we heard from Sarah in Mexico and from Matias building something in Nicaragua beautiful in two weeks we're gonna have Dennis in Austria and yeah, we're spread out like all over the planet. It's a joy to co-create with this with these pioneers and yeah, amazing people. So yeah, good start into this new day. Finish my first round of push-ups. 300 are on the agenda today again. So yeah, let's see what will unfold. <laughs> over the course of these 24 hours. And now I'm gonna go into video editing mode. These videos always get created in the night. Editing is the perfect activity for these hours. Now I can where everybody else is sleeping. of the elements oh in the night it's very very cold like no clouds you see an abundance of stars pretty crisp air Woo! and then in the morning when the sun comes out it gets hot very very soon oh dry season is approaching raining less and less and that's why you see it in the land it's less it's less uh, less lush less green the rice gets harvested right now. It feels a little bit drier. And that's why it's colder in the night, and hotter in the day. So many people say, oh, I could not live in Bali because like, I want to have the, the different seasons. Here in the tropics, we have seasons too, just differently. Of course, there will be no snow. <laughs> and it's always at least like in the night, at least 15 degrees Celsius. Doesn't get colder than that. Besides that, you still have a lot of changes over a year.
Friends, when I look out there into the world, I see so many people. That's the dark. Like this. It's better. When I look out there into the world, I see so many people living like the fitness lifestyle. They're like working out each and every day and living like deeply physical lives connected with their bodies. And then there are a lot of people who are living the spiritual lifestyle. They're meditating every day. They're using spiritual language and dressing in a spiritual way. And yeah, you basically recognize them from, from far away. <laughs> um, and they both develop their own like language and demeanor and like way of life. And it's like two bubbles. But I see not a lot of people who are bridging the gap, who are immersing themselves fully into the physical world as well as into the spiritual world. And that's another example how important it is to integrate instead of to separate. Topic that we talked about a couple of days ago. All right, let's have some lunch. Mmm, coconuts and cucumber and Tempeh. Oh. <laughs> and algae and cauliflower cashew sauce. Mm. 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 It's how deeply interlinked the spiritual and the physical are became very clear to me when I realized that the bottleneck for my meditation journey for like how long I can be in this state of surrender and just being is actually the flexibility of my legs because after around 45 minutes uh, it's getting really uncomfortable so yeah the physical is limiting my spiritual abilities and the other way around too if we identify ourselves too much with the physical be it with pain or with how our body is look or like really the physical state of the world on a global scale with all the climate change and all the species extinction and all the destruction and all the suffering like if we identify 100 percent with the physical we become too tense and too tr trying too hard and as a result not being an effective agent of change because we we lose our sense of ease and effortlessness and we cannot just play freely we become too tense so this nicely illustrates how the physical realm and the spiritual realm are deeply intertwined. Basically for me, they are like, they're almost, this, they're, there are moments where they almost like feel the same. Because like, what is the, what is the spiritual realm? The spiritual is the living, living from a place of, in, of interconnectedness and of perfection of all things. Like realizing that we are living on this, like tiny planet spinning in the galaxy with like three to four billion years of history before us and that spanning into the indefinite future realizing that the lives that we are living right now are happening at such a unique moment in time and like all of that was never existing before and like just this incomprehensible perfection and awe and wonder that gets provoked by living from this place of surrender of okay i'm just here in the here and now and i'm being who i am without trying to do anything without trying to achieve anything just like playing the role i was gifted to and this dynamic for me gets very 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 felt when i grow my own food or when i use a composting toilet where my personal waste gets turned into fertilizer for my food forest, for my garden, which in turn nourishes me again. And then I go to the composting toilet again and I become like an active part in the cycle of life. This deeply physical experience connect me, connects me with the interconnectedness and with the perfection of everything like equally. 
almost the same as sitting in a meditation or having a profound spiritual experience in a medicine journey or whatever. Like, and this shows me that this is not, these are not two separate realms. We're basically talking about the same, just looking at it through different lenses. The camera died. I don't have a spare battery with me. So now we're on the phone. First and foremost, we are incarnated, in carne, in the flesh. We are physical beings. Like, this is what, in my opinion, is the purpose of incarnation. If we would just be floating around in some spiritual realms, like being at one with everything, like we wouldn't have incarnated. This is our invitation to make a physical experience. That's why I believe it's our first and foremost responsibility to deeply connect with the physical, with Mama Gaia, with the earth. This is what grounds us. And to live all that with the awareness that we are after this physical incarnation has ended, going back to the spiritual realms where everything is at one, like... Beautiful, beautiful. But let's get into contact. Let's get into contact. Let's get our hands and our feet like dirty and wet and muddy and like really immersed in the three-dimensional, in the physical. And if we are able to see the sacred, to see the special, to see the spiritual in the physical, in the mundane, in the three-dimensional, then we don't need to escape because we are already there. We are where we need to be, where we are belong, where we are looking for the paradise. It's here, it's present, it's right before, before our eyes, it's under our feet, it's here. And the only thing we need to do is to deeply connect with the physical, to walk barefoot, to be naked as much as possible, to hug, to enjoy great food, to enjoy relationships, to enjoy laughter, to make music, to make art, to do sports, to sweat, to like really exhaust your body, to be so sore that you cannot walk. Like this, this is the gateway to the heavens. If we see the sacred in these ordinary, un, un, kind of unspecial and in the, at the same time very special three-dimensional physical experiences, I cannot think of anything more spiritual than that. I cannot think of anything more spiritual than fully arriving where we are right now. Tasting, smelling, like immersing ourselves in this world fully. Not holding anything back. Feeling all the emotions, feeling all the bodily sensations, like all in. That's the most spiritual thing we can do, I believe. Before I want to connect with some angelic beings, I want to taste them. all the leaves I can, I can, like, I can find. This is right in front of my eyes. Like, I want to, like, seeing this papaya and waiting for it to ripen each and every day a little bit more. Seeing that, this to me is the most spiritual thing we can do. One last idea on that. About the importance of the air quality we breathe. <laughs> Professor Hilton Hotema beautifully describes in his book Man's Higher Consciousness how the food we eat is the nourishment on our, for our physical body and the air we breathe is the nourishment for our spiritual body. When I realized that spirare, the Latin translation of breathing, comes from spirit, like something clicked that if we breathe polluted stagnant dirty city air our spiritual capacities can only degradate 
And that's one of the major reasons why I'm living where I'm living. Because like everything is so green. Trees filter the air we breathe. If we are living in a place where there are no trees at all, like no wonder we are deteriorating both physically as well as spiritually. So be very aware of the air you breathe. Because the air you breathe is your gateway to not only the spiritual world, but to your full physical thriving as well. Like the lungs are our biggest organ inside the body besides the, besides the skin on the outside. But like, life begins here. Life begins with the breath. So... That's why one of the most important design criteria for Castoria for the new paradigm living space we are currently building is to settle in tropical mountain regions. Because tropical mountain regions like where we are right now, here in the center, in the heart of Mama Bali, right there. Currently it's a little bit foggy. Mount Patukaru with 2,300 meters of altitude, the second highest um, peak on this island. Back. We are here at an altitude of 800 meters. The air quality is something completely else than in the lowlands of Bali. So, tropical mountain regions. That's the place for future custodians, for people who are really all in to their full physical and spiritual thriving. With that being said, I'm going to take a couple of more breaths. <laughs> Wish you a beautiful day. Thank you for this shared time together.